YouTube, it's TurboDude555 and today, first lot of my parts arrived. So I'm going to give you a very quick run through of what came today. So I'd start off with, got the compression fittings for uh, some of the tubing that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've heard compression fittings are the best kind to do because um, there's no need for any uh, Barbs, well, I say no need for any barbs, these have barbs in them, but with them being a crum compression fitting, there's no need for any uh, clamps or anything because they're, uh, they're sort of pre clamped. You know, put a little thing on the end of the tube, I'll be showing that later, and then they uh, compress down, squeeze onto the barb, so no hideous bits of plastic or anything like that. Got the UV active blue fessor tube, and you get 2.5 meters of this from scan for about seven pounds so uh, what three dollars or something over in America so uh, that's not bad at all for 2.5 meters of it that's probably all the tubing I'm going to need so uh, there'll be opportunities for making mistakes there uh, I got the MSI P67A GD I'll move that <laughs> GD65 um, I know Intel's having some problems with uh, their motherboards, but um, it well with the uh, chip, not the motherboard. But uh, it only affects the three gigabits a second parts anyway. So I got this one because it has five, six gigabits a second parts. So I should avoid any of the problems. So yeah, there should be no problems there. We'll have a closer look at that in a in a little while. So as you probably already, as you probably already guessed mumbling. You might have just seen this Bits Power uh, tea box because I'm going to have some uh, LCDs on the front showing the temperatures of the water so I'm going to have a little uh, a little uh, thermometer going into there the, a G quarter cap and then the tubing just goes straight through there and it measures as it goes through so I've got a couple of those not sure where I've just put the other one. I hope I haven't lost that. Because those are cheap. Got the Jacoon 4 times UV cathodes there. CCFL 4 in 1 kit. Now, uh, won't be quite copying that picture. I'll be putting them inside the case at the top and bottom for lighting all the tubing or any other UV reactive things. Got the Cooler Master Silent Pro uh, 80 plus gold. 1200 watt power supply because I will be running two graphics cards that I want 600 watts alone So making sure I've got plenty of headroom for overclocking for powering the processor and all the other miscellaneous bits So more power Got the XSPC with pump reservoir I'll have a close-up of that in a minute. I've got an empty one as well for putting my own pump in because the ones that come with these are just uh, pretty basic 750 litres an hour models because I'm getting a Lang D5 or Lang Liang or whatever you call it and for the 8 fans that will be powering that monster down there I've got the uh, NESQ 8 channel fan controller just so when I'm not overclocking anything I can turn down the fans if they're noisy we'll be having a look at those later but yeah, that is uh, a large radiator. Do the hand measurement there. That is a large radiator, so unless you mount it outside the case, I have one of those bad boys for the bottom. It will take up a lot of space. Okay, let's have a little look at the uh, reservoirs. So I've got the 750 litres an hour built-in pump for this XSPC reservoir, which comes up with two face plates. So if you've got a silver aluminium case or a white case then you can use that one or if you're not bothered about colour coding you could just use that anyway I guess. But you see because I have a black case I should be using the brushed aluminium XSPC case there with the little window so you can see the water Obviously it's not actual water, it's coolant, but uh, somewhere in here it comes with a, a single 5mm blue LED. 
which you don't have to use, but it comes with, and you can get different colours depending on what colour your uh, coolant is. If you've got clear, it's just going to light it up, whatever colour the light you put in is. Oh, you can always get a UV one if you've got UV fluid like I have, so I don't know if I'll uh, do that. I'll see what the blue looks like. And then we've got the basically the pretty much the same model, but without the pump, because I want a more powerful pump, putting a D5 in there on the uh, underside next to the uh, actual reservoir in there. Because I want something a lot more powerful for uh, cooling the CPU. Well, this one I'll be just using for the graphics cards. So two loops technically, but two single loops. One for the graphics card, one for the CPU. Not got the pump yet, so I'll probably just put that in for uh, aesthetic purposes for the moment. So yeah, we'll stick that in and see how that looks. Uh, after taking the other side panel off, there's something else I thought I should mention. Is that cable routing in this case is going to be a breeze, because just down here, there's a very fine space between the back of the uh, motherboard tray with its cutout and where the side panel will go, the side panel will go down here so uh, there's a good hmm, maybe an inch gap down here for hiding away all the cables because I am a tidy cable freak you shouldn't have them all on show especially where airflow is concerned because you want uh, nothing blocking it so I'm going to take out the rest of these uh, screws and then uh, we'll get on to mounting some of these in Okay, so here we are with all the uh, bays that I've got so far fitted. Got an S fan controller, the pre pumped XSPC, and the one without the pump for the CPU. When I get my special pump. Hey, pardon the music, that's my girlfriend on her laptop. <laughs> So the actual reservoir, the CPU ones on this side. Pump will be going in here. That's the one that already has a pump built in. 